Hi everyone, my name is Shantasia. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> everyone it is Saturday uh, February 23rd and today is going to be a fun day hopefully um, we are headed off to the beautiful Warriors Women's Conference for the day and I'm looking forward to sharing it with you I'm very excited about today but I'm not feeling very well so let's go on our fun journey We can't question what we hear from God in the times that we are not stressed. We cannot change who we are just because of our circumstances. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry about the lighting. I'm kind of having a hard time finding, it's either too bright or too dark. This is pretty much what we have to work with because I don't have much time to film. And I forgot that I needed to do a video today. So this is like a kind of last minute thing. But I wanted to update you on my currently reading and what I read in January because I read a lot of interesting books, some different books, and definitely have some opinions. Um, I do have a book that I'm probably going to do just a review on it because it was so awful. And I feel like as a Christian or religious author, like there was just so much wrong with this book. and. I just really wanted to talk about it because I think that in general we could learn a lot from what not to do in this book. So anyways, um, I do not have physical copies of some of these books. They are digital, but I will leave links in the description box below for all the books that I mentioned so you can go check them out if you'd like. So for January, um, I read Kiss of Night by Debbie Vigu. I'm not really sure. Here it is. This book got a five stars. It was really interesting. It's a different take on vampirism from a Christian perspective, but it's not like campy. It was really refreshing and I was really shocked by how well she executed it. And this one I gave five stars. It's a romance. Um, it's like she's a religious person and then she finds out there's a secret in her family and it all involves vampires and I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. If you love vampire stories, this is the story for you because it is new. It is different. And I loved it. It's just fantastic. The next book I read was Courage by Lauren H. Salisbury. And this book was amazing. This is a spec fic author. Um, she wrote a science fiction telling of the story of Moses. And it's amazing. Like she did an amazing job on it. And this one I am going to do a full review on. She contacted me through one of our groups and I was able to beta read this book for her. It is available. So if you are interested in some crazy cool stuff, you are going to want to go and check it out down below. Five stars. Um, she is great world building it was, it was very refreshing like it wasn't overdone she did everything just perfectly the next one i did was i reread the gender game by bella forest and this one only gets a four stars <clears throat> this series was my favorite last year but i don't know what it is about these books that are more popular like these series that are kind of popular because it seems like whenever I go back and reread them, I don't really appreciate them as much. <laughs> I'm not really sure what that's all about. So this one, I only gave four stars. I just felt like it was kind of clunky. Um, I don't know. I really enjoyed it last year. So I don't know if maybe I was just in kind of a mood. I also read it this time 
as an audiobook because I needed something different to do while I was at work at night to stay awake. So maybe it was the narrator, I'm not sure. It just didn't seem to flow the same way that I remembered it. And it didn't seem to be as original. I don't know, there were just things about it that I just kind of irritated me. The next book that I read was Made of Virtue by Chandra True Love Fry. And this book got a one star. I was yelling at it. I threw it at one point. <laughs> I mean, it was an audiobook, so I threw my phone. Um, this book is awful, and I, not so much her writing. Like, her writing was very good. The pacing of the story was very good. I really enjoyed those aspects of the book, but it's a Christian romance. And I really felt like this book was, everything that's wrong with Christian romance was in this book. And I want to dissect this one. This is the one that I want to go through and just really talk about what is wrong with it because I think that as authors, we kind of get stuck in the ideals of things. And this was definitely where she was like the ideal Christian female, which I had huge problems with. So yeah, that one we're definitely going to dissect. I want to get a paper copy of it and just mark it up and really explore it and then I'm going to do a full review video. The next book that I got was Austin Land by Shannon Hale and this is the DVD. This was my first exposure to Austin Land. I did not realize it was a book but when this movie came out I love it. Like. This is one of my favorite movies and the book definitely did not disappoint. Like it was just as funny. A lot of the scenes were word for word. So if they were in the movie, they really stayed true to that. The ending was different, but I liked both endings and I want to do a side by side comparison of the book versus the movie. So check that out when I get that. I will leave a link up there once I have that filmed and posted, but I really enjoyed it. Like it's a laugh out loud, zany, crazy, oh my word, how can this happen? And yes, I could see this happening to me in real life kind of book. And it just really was enjoyable. I definitely recommend it. The narrator was amazing. I think that added to it and it was super fun. For my currently reading, I have a lot of books in my currently reading. So I am currently reading A Voice in the Wind by Francine Rivers. And this is a book that I read probably 10 years ago, and I loved the series. It's the Mark of the Lion series, and I absolutely loved it, but I'm having a hard time getting through it this time, and I'm not 100% sure why. Um, I still love the book, but I almost kind of wish that it was only told from Hadassah's perspective, whereas right now it's like every other chapter and it's Hadassah's perspective, Mark's perspective, and Atreides' perspective. And later on in the story, they all kind of, like their storylines all kind of meld. So right now it's like set up, I feel. And she's an amazing author. She's my favorite Christian author. Like this is the lady that showed me that you can write about sex and sin and all those things without being terribly descriptive, but still write real stories with real people and real problems and real things that happen and real choices that we make as real people in a book without being very graphic about it. So she is definitely like a huge inspiration to me, but for some reason this book is really taken a lot for me to read. And it might be just because I do have a lot of books that I'm currently reading, so maybe if I would just sit down and just focus on this book, it would be better. But um, I just have not had time. It's a very thick book and it's very close print, uh, lots of information. If you love Spartacus, the TV show, there is so much in common with the series. So you would enjoy this because it's very much about the gladiators and the society of Rome as that is happening. Then you have Hadassah who is a Jewess who um, is brought into captivity into Rome. So you kind of get 
the perspective of um, the gladiator who is a slave captured from Germany. You have the perspective of a Jewess who is a captured slave. Then you get the perspective of, of Marcus who is a Roman raised, uh, what was he called, Ephesian? So his family is Ephesian, but he was raised in Rome. And you kind of get all those three different perspectives of Rome and what was going on in that time period of the Gladiator. So it's a really fun read. Check it out. It's the Mark of the Lion series by Francine Rivers. This is the first book, A Voice in the Wind. And I will be checking my way through the series because it is, again, one of my favorite authors. And I love her style. I love the message that she spreads with her stories. And I just highly recommend her. The next book that I am reading, I started this one in January, and it's called A God Called Father, One's Woman, One Woman's Recovery from Incest and Multiple Personality Disorder. And this book is, I'm not sure, it was first published in the Dutch language um, in Europe, um, and then it was re you know, translated, and I think it was translated, I'm not sure, and then released in the United States. I'm trying to think what it was. Um, in 2002. So this isn't a new book, but it's kind of something, a topic that I enjoy um, learning about. And I'm actually having a difficult time getting through this book. i uh, finding it very triggering. So I'm kind of taking my time with it, reading it a little bit here and there so that uh, just parts of it that I can handle just because it talks about a woman whose life is similar to my experience. So it brings up memories and things for me. So I love it though. Um, she's very eloquent, very clear, and just I'm enjoying it. It's a good one. I had to move. I'm going to try to get through this before I lose all of my lights and have squares all over my face from the sun setting. All right, and the next book that I'm reading is Kiss of Death which is also by Debbie Vigu. I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. I'm sure I'm just killing it. Um, and this is the second book to that first book that I talked about, Kiss of Night. And I am really enjoying this still. It's the same concept. It's um, a family that's been pulled into an ancient vampire mystery. And can vampires be redeemed? Are they something, how do they fit in the scheme of things with God and things like that? So this one is definitely a good one. I, I love this author. Like, I just really feel like she took something that is so overdone and she made it something that is so fresh and new. The next book that I'm reading is Grace for the Good Girl, Letting Go of the Try Hard Life by Emily P. Freeman. Uh, this one I'm having a hard time getting into. I've started it a couple times, but again, I think it's just like a mood thing that I would probably be able to enjoy it and focus on it if I would actually sit down and read, if I had some time to read it. And last but not least, The Daily Writer. This one's going to be probably the last time that I mention it because it is going to be on my reading list for the year because it is a 365 day book. So what are you reading? Drop a comment down below and let me know. And if you'd like, you can check out my Goodreads. The link is in the description box below. If you are on Goodreads, be sure to drop a link as well because I'd really love to follow you and see what you are reading and add some of your books to my TBR. That is it for today. I will see you guys next time.